let me make the point first that what the United Kingdom is planning for here is the absolute worst case scenario. So it's something which, which is not likely to happen, but you have to prepare for all different eventualities. And this is for a no-deal Brexit. And it's done to keep citizens informed as to this possibility. And so the, there is a reassurance that, that those options, the, the worst case scenario options have been looked at. But that doesn't mean they're going to happen. It's just preparing for the worst case scenario. Well, you say it's a worst case scenario, and I'm sure that there are many who would agree with you, but it is a preferred option for some, and there are MPs who advocate a no deal, some of them here for National Day. Well, th th there are, I don't know how many millions of people who voted to leave the European Union without quite understanding, in my view, what the full implications of that departure actually meant. And what we're now seeing, what we've seen in the two years since the referendum, what we are now seeing is exactly what the full implications are and what they might be in the context of there being no deal at all between the United Kingdom and the European Union, or even in the context of having a deal which covers some areas. And uh, the passports, the ID cards, the, the telephone roaming, all these are situations which would arise in the context of a no deal Brexit if there is no agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union. You know the latest uh, comments coming from Brussels and coming from London is that such agreement is now seen to be likely, that a no deal Brexit is unlikely, but nonetheless, as I said, preparations need to be made for every eventuality. What, what will the, the effect be? Well, one immediate effect is that we, if we leave the European Union in March and there's no deal, we are all third country nationals. Well, when you've got third country nationals and EU nationals, crossing the frontier. Are you worried that this could create queues? Because of course it is Spain and a frontier that has in the past proved unpredictable. Well I think the, the border we identified at the very beginning in 2016 that the border was one of the areas that we needed to safeguard and to protect and um, in, not just in terms of frontier workers but also in terms of residents of Gibraltar, of British citizens who work, in, who work in Gibraltar and who live in Spain. There are also 10 million tourists who visit Gibraltar and who generate a considerable amount of economic activity. So a huge amount of work has gone into looking at, for example, different solutions for the border. I think one of them, as we've mentioned in the past, is the idea of Gibraltar joining Schengen, of having a common travel area with Schengen, the possibility of implementing aspects of the local frontier traffic regulation, which regulates uh, non-EU, non-Schengen areas and Schengen areas, but allows for special circumstances and special crossings at those particular borders. We've looked very closely at the borders operated between the European Union and the microstates, Andorra, Liechtenstein, San Marino. We've looked at uh, what ha Monaco, what happens at those particular borders. And interesting, interestingly, we've looked at the situation in Ceuta and in Melilla. They have a very special frontier crossing arrangements between those territories. And, and Morocco. So we've, we've, we've done a huge amount of work in relation to borders and in relation to border crossings. All this is happening against a framework of the wider agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union. That is not yet settled, but as I said earlier, it is likely that there will be an agreement and that agreement will happen in October or now they say in November.